Hi guys and welcome to this uh, little uh, talk. Uh, I'm not going to call it a review because perhaps the review is not the, the most adequate word. But it's a talk about some IEMs which, um, well, first of all, all of them are all BA IEMs except for the Halo here, which from Tansio Mira, which is a hybrid. It's a BAs and um, ESTs. But all of these IEMs, uh, besides the fact that they are just BA uh, composed of BAs internally, um, some of them are IEMs that were actually pretty good and just, you know, came and went very quickly, fell into into the uh, forgotten uh, box very quickly. Some of them didn't even really get a chance to show how good they were um, based on the fact the price point was maybe not ex not the ideal, uh, maybe they didn't get enough uh, exposure from the, the respective brands. Uh, so there, there are a number of factors here which I think has affected the the um, the uh, uh, projection or the, the the you know the the, the promotion of some of these IEMs <clears throat> and and if nothing if for nothing else then I just thought it would be an interesting um, little talk to have okay what do I have here AS sixteen Pro from KZ AS twenty four also from KZ AudioSense DT six hundred CVJ Kai Kumo uh, QE Ears Orchestra Light uh, IVPIQ V eleven Leisurely Audio L8S, um, Night Oblivion Butas Tour, and the Tansio Mirai Halo. Okay. Um, let's let's start here with the KC, the AS16 Pro. AS16 Pro came out, 8 BAs, nice plastic shell, the usual nice construction, especially for the price, especially, you know, obviously considering the price of, of the product, you can get this now for uh, as, as low as $35. So for $35, let me just tell you something, just get it, it's it's worth it, it it's worth the $35. Um, when it initially came out, ah, because the up, you know, the mids from the upper mids were done in an awkward way. There was a, a relatively early pin again, which made things sound a little bit weird because the dip that occurred afterwards was more noticeable and this that. Well, it was easily solvable with a little thirty ohm impedance adapter, which I don't know why it was. Oh wow, you know why launch a product and then have to have an adapter? This well, the DT six hundred also with the eighty ohm adapter which came included with it was something that you could do so I, I sometimes question why why um why people complain so much about certain basic things so what if you have to put an in impetus adapter if that puts if you put in the impetus adapter it will please some people and without the impetus adapter you will please other people then it's a win-win situation it's a simple you know it's i i, I don't understand anyway sound wise it's a nice, great, fun bass. I mean, uh, at, at times you even forgot it was um, a BA, uh, a BA that were doing it because it was a, a nice full bass. I mean, the 22.955, when it is nicely um, in, implemented, it does play decently. Um, yeah, and, and it does good on, on EDM and, and, and some uh, bass heavy songs. So, you know, there must be credit must be given to it uh, like I said its issue was that after its pin again peak of two point something it had a dip which was just a little bit too significant and ultimately that cost it some detail it cost it it cost the the female vocals being as nice as they could possibly be um, but on the other hand uh, there wasn't no real harshness in that area there of let's say 2.5 to 6k which sometimes affects some people it wasn't aggressive in that in that section of the of the spectrum <coughs> excuse me and <coughs> truth be told I, I i enjoy it and even to this day sometimes i do listen to it i think it's a great sounding i am going for the 35 dollars that it now costs <laughs> honestly you can't really complain um, before I just carry on, you will see I've got a whole bunch of decks here, dongles, whatever you want to call them. And the reason is I actually tried all of them with these IEMs to see how they would interact with the set, with the with which one of them. And there were better matches and worse matches. For example, the AS20, the AS20, the AS16 Pro worked very well with uh, the ESS dongles, uh, which usually are a little bit on the brighter side. However, where I saw it really shining, I mean, it, it was a surprise actually, was with the Colorfly the M1P, okay? With the Colorfly M1P and with the, the Simgot, the, sorry, the, the, the uh, Fool, the, the Snowy Knight, it was the two dongles that it just edged out ever so slightly, mind you, ever so slightly, just edged out 
the, the also the the cal fiber but the the m the m the, 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 the cda it etched out the ju4x the yuki the cayenne uh, the ru7 uh, the, the 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 martha from from hadiz uh, and as well the m50 so the, the the combination that you're going to use is important all right uh, so overall like i said nice im nice sound engaging satisfying they then came out with the as24 which was an improvement especially in terms of the fact that it gave us tuning switches which work and did give a tunability to the to the sound so no need for impedance adapters blah 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 um but it improved especially the the, the mids upper mids and treble are really good on the on the as24 very detailed very resolving technically very capable uh, yes you do notice that ba timbre perhaps a little bit more than you do notice there on the on the as16 pro and yes you have lost a little bit of base energy in terms of quantity as compared to the as16 pro the as16 pro because it's got two bas handling the base there's more girth to the to the base uh, you know there's i mean you take song you take a song like for example which I, I'll, I'll then on my playlist you can go check it out but you take a song like um uh, do it in uh, do it in luxury by by Chris Botti. The the beginning of that song, the first couple of seconds of that song, has got a, a nice bass line going, and then you know things start coming in. Um, uh, I mean, it does it really well here. Fantastic, all the details, everything. But the bass there, that 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 slam of the bass on there is just a little bit more present. Fair enough, it's a twofold thing. It doesn't. It's not as energetic in the in the upper mids and that mids to upper mids. But it you feel you feel it more. You can feel it more here than than you can on the S24. But overall, the S24 again, in my opinion, and for about one hundred and ten dollars roughly, is, is a nice IM. It sounds fantastic, and I and once more, I don't understand why it got so much, uh, so much negative talk. You know, uh, well, this and that. It's a nice IM, people. It really is. It plays well. Uh, you know, I, I honestly question myself if it didn't say KZ, if people would have had the same reaction. Overall, like I said, nice IM. AudioSense DT600. It's an IM that I've had for ages. Uh, I used it with and without the impetus adapter. Um, if I want a warmer sound, if I want a sound which gives me that presence of the slam a little bit more then i don't put the impedance adapter um it's got a nice tucked bass uh, something that only the variations back basically back then uh, was doing because this has been around for like four years now um so nice bass really nice bass and um, then the mids the upper mids and the treble uh, they are slightly warm a little bit more relaxed you don't notice that ba tonality so much Although when you look at the graph, you'll think, oh my God, this is a little bit of a mess. But no, it actually does sound pretty, pretty decent. When you put the BA, uh, when you put the impedance adapter, my, my apologies, then you change that dynamics. It, sh it shifts its focus more into the mids, upper mids and treble. And uh, subdues slightly the bass. So you get more details, more twinklies, more sparklies. Nice. It's a, it's a really nice IM. I remember when I did my review back back in the time when the timers came out. Uh, in terms of detail, with the impedance adapter, it was actually trading blows with the timeless. Honestly, it was actually trading blows with the timeless, and the timeless was very decent in that in that department. It, it, you know, in that chapter, it, it was a very good IM. Next, CVJ Kaikumo, <clears throat> eight BAs. Uh, an interesting implementation in terms of the bass, because it was the first time a dual. Um, Dual 22955 was used. Usually, uh, the 22955 is singles, and when they put, they actually put two single units, like they do here on the A16 Pro, or, or on the on the DT600. Yeah, it's a unit which um, in, has a, it's a dual unit, but in a single housing. So, first time that implementation was done, uh, as far as I know. Bass sounds fantastic. We're talking about a bass which is along the lines of the bass of the AS16 and of the AS24 um, in terms of its impact. Um, details, uh, uh, detail, you know, the de detail retrieval, in, uh, maybe, maybe uh, uh, the, the, its biggest issue was you notice a little bit more the BA timbre than you do on the AS24 and on, 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 the, uh, on the, 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 the DT600 as well. Um, you know, 
it's not so special female female vocals uh, but overall i think the the, the biggest problem yeah, of the of the kumo for not having been as successful as it could have been is the fact that it cost almost 200 dollars uh, and so you know it, it was difficult to justify the 110 roughly of the as24 to the almost 200 the 190 i believe of the kumo it, it was a difficult one to justify it. yes okay it still had the the switches here for you to to modify the sound profile and actually if you have the first switch off which is the one that uh, boosts the bass uh, the sound becomes very very similar to the as24 so i would actually say that they are very similar in that in terms of of their ability to to be resolving and quite technical very technical uh, the, the two of them um but you know the the price is the issue and also i think maybe the the, the ba timbre tonality is is more prominent because of the fact that they've used yeah a metal shell if maybe perhaps they had not used a, a metal shell uh perhaps then you know who knows that that timbre could have been a little bit more controlled but overall once again a nice sounding i am okay actually just rewinding us slightly i would say that the as16 is more musical than necessarily technical the AS24 is more uh, technical than musical. The the DT600 is a mix of the two. The, well, let me rephrase that. Without the impedance adapter, more musical. With the impedance adapter, definitely more technical. There, um, it is always more on the technical side, although it does have uh, more musicality than the AS24. I, I hope that... that Kind of a, it's understandable what i'm trying to get to um kiwi ears orchestra light it's the first one out of the, this bunch that has a, a completely different approach also eight bas very relaxed tuning it's all about being smooth very correct very um very uh, coherent um everything in the right quantities without anything kind of standing out i mean none of the ones before we could consider neutral they're all colored in their sound presentation um, some more some less but they all are colored this one has a, it's got a more uh, neutral approach uh, an approach of being more audiophile uh, it has obviously good things if that is your thing if you like that more 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 correct approach to music then this is definitely the one to go but it does lose in terms of fun i mean you don't have that that fun bass like you do there on the on the kumo uh, you don't but uh, there's really not much that, that you know that's not a deal breaker it's just the way that's been tuned so I, I can't say that this is better this is worse this is out of the first few that i've showed probably the most audio file correct one okay and and the, the, i mean at 230 dollars um it was well priced you know uh, i think they could have improved slightly in terms of the cable because the stock cable is a little bit you know a little bit meh uh, but shell is beautiful resin shell like the shell of the dc 600 so nice build quality nice proper uh, you know it's nice it's a really nice one it's now available as well in different colors so it's a, it's a nice solid iem if you're looking for an audio file correct sound um then we have yeah the ivp iq v11 which just hasn't gotten any attention at all um and this surprisingly is very much like the orchestra light in the mids upper mids and treble it's just got way more bass and i think well first of all they're using sony and 38 d1x's as opposed to 22955 but this thing has got some serious amount of bass okay it's got some serious amount of bass and i think that's the reason why um some people that have heard it maybe didn't give it its deserved uh it's deserved merit because if the bass that it has wasn't wasn't good quality or wasn't well done then i'll say okay fine fair enough but no it's got plenty of of it's it's got it, it it's it's a bass let me put it to you this way in terms of bass it's a bass which is every bit as good as the bass of the halo and that's two thousand dollars so i think i'm i'm giving it a, a, a real serious praise there now what is the sound like overall well it's a, it's a warmer sounding i am uh, with the benefits of that which is you don't have that ba timbre you don't have any of that but it is a more warmer sounding i am uh, it's not as detailed it's not as technically capable as the as24 for example is or even as the the kumo or even the orchestra light i mean if i'm just going to be comparing it here purely with the orchestra light because they are priced at roughly about the same thing this is about 290 dollars give or take <laughs> 
and this is definitely the more musical I am compared to, to the, uh, the the orchestra like definitely without uh, no, no comparison uh, the more fun definitely now mind you when I'm talking musical uh, and, and for me musical means the one that gives me the most engagement if I'm looking or if I wanting to say which is the more musically correct then yes this is the more musically correct the more musically fun definitely this one this one can do EDM and and can do some even some rock which is something which I don't listen can do some rock quite decently while there I found that it was just I don't know it sounded okay but it was just lacking something it was just lacking a little bit of more guts this has got plenty guts sounds amazing uh, male vocals female vocals it's it's nice it's just that it's because of that bass quantity that it has it's a it's got a a a more um, a more warmer type of presentation okay um L8S from uh, Leisurely Audio, another IM that just hasn't gotten any attention. And this thing, um, if, and if you guys recall as well, uh, this thing sound has got a sound which is very, very, very comparable to the sound of the Neon Pro. I'm not saying that it's better than the Neon Pro for my world audio, no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that the tuning style that they've used here is that tuning style of the world audio Neon Pro, and it has a lot of the same vibe, a lot of the same... Uh, engagement this is to three hundred and sixty dollars uh, the neon pro seven hundred and fifty um, if you want that style of sound you can't reach that far definitely this is a is a, a good option compared to the ones that I've shown here before um, it's probably probably not only compared to these but compared to all of the IEMs here the one that's the most competent when you consider all the factors of price build quality sound everything um, the price for the built is amazing again resin shell it's using once more Sony 38 D1X's in the base uh, so the built is good um, in terms of its accessories it could be slightly better that's true uh, this is not the stock cable by the way um, but then it's it's very genre capable. It will it will basically do anything quite well. Um, and and when I show you the graphs now in a second for all of them, you will see that the graph here is is a is actually a very nicely executed graph. It is genuinely a very nicely executed graph, and it and it shows by the way that you then put, does music. It will do anything from, for example, Sunrise by Larry Carlton to Control You by Movement. It will do it very well both both of them you know i didn't really find any any occasions where i could say oh no this is lacking it's not doing its thing for the price no it is a genuinely good im and it just got forgotten completely and then the last two which is the butas tour and the um uh, Mirai hello well the butas tour <clears throat> i like it period i think it's an amazing im 10 bas all perfectly matched, all perfectly tuned. Um, some people complained about it being a little bit overly bright, but I think the biggest uh, thing that affected the Butas Tour's performance, or, or not really performance, but the Butas Tour, uh, Butas Tour's um, uh, sales was the, the the fact that it was clouded by some issues with, concerning uh, that, uh, whether it, or whether or not it was genuinely a, a from the ground up project or basically the, the, they used an IM which already existed and on, on Taobao and they just remace, renamed it. So the, the usual chai fi drama, you know, like the Mexican soap opera present someone. <laughs> it's, it's, it, you just want to laugh, honestly. Um, in terms of its sound, fantastic i am it's got everything bass mids treble everything in the right quantity um like i said some people complained about it being overly bright i didn't uh funny enough and it's true i tried a whole bunch of tips but the 570s the h570s are the tips that work the best with it that's why i'm using it um connected with any of the um, size logic chips so do a full yuki it sounded phenomenal. Uh, also, the the colorfly, yeah, sorry, the CDI sounded phenomenal. Uh, I didn't particularly think that the match with any of the ESS stuff was, was the best, or with the Cayenne Audio Seven was the most adequate. But with the uh, with the Cyrus Logic chips, and even with the with the forty four ninety threes, fantastic. 
with the Q15. Unbelievable. This and that, that's the perfect synergy. Okay, but if you, if you don't have this for some reason, and you can afford some, you know, you can afford one of these dongles here, go for any one of them because the matching will be spot on. Um, very much what I've said about here, the Buddha Studio Plus, the Halo. The, the, the thing that the Halo does more than the Buddha Studio here is it's got more twinklies and sparklies up top and ever so slightly more little bit amount of bass, okay? Um, in terms of its technicalities, they are very comparable. You just get a better effect of, of hologram here on the Halo. Uh, oh, fair enough, fair enough. I am kind of condensing the differences to the main ones. Uh, there are uh, enough differences for you to notice the sound from one to the other. And you will notice the sound difference from one and the other. Now, are these differences uh, enough to justify the price? I mean, this is roughly 600, this is 2000. No, I'll be honest, no, no. Uh, and I said it, the Halo, I would have, um, you know, however much I like the Halo, and I think the Halo is probably one of the the best IEMs that I've heard, I think the Halo's price should have been around the $1,200, $1,300 uh, max. And if it was at around that price, I think that it would have sold way more. Uh, it would have been more, more, um, more easy for some people to take the risk of buying it um, because the truth is it is sounds fantastic the bass the bits the highs the the, the, the extension of the highs everything is it, it's phenomenal and again matched with the q15 it's something that has to be heard to really be appreciated um, you know it's it's pretty versatile in terms of all the, of the songs that you can do um, like lazy from uh, bump to soul is something that i've been listening to a lot of bump to soul lately you've got to listen to it honestly lazy bump to soul on on the halo and on the buta stool is something else it is it's an experience truly it is an experience i'm not saying that that song won't play well in a lot of these other ims yes it will but you will only really appreciate these two when you go from some of these others and you go onto this one and onto these two and you say to yourself oh wow okay we are on a different championship we're in a different league yeah all right um I mean, I, I can just briefly talk, you know, talk about the technicalities of all of these IEMs. <clears throat> like I said in, uh, earlier, the AS16, I find it to be more of a musical IEM than necessarily technical. Um, the AS24 by contrast more technical. It's got a nice sound stage, nice imaging, good detailed retrieval. Uh, but um, the truth is this, for the price, I can't really complain about the technicalities of the AS16 Pro. I cannot, I can, you know, the, the thing here is, Compared to the S24, this has got just better technicalities. The technicalities of the of the DT600 are going to be very much dependent on whether you're using the the the, the, the impedance adapter or not. If you use the impedance adapter, definitely the technicalities are better, better sound stage, better imaging, better detail retrieval. Um, the Kumo, uh, the Kumo, um, or Kai Kumo, if you want to call it, give it its full name. Again, technically pretty decent. Um, I think uh, these two are very comparable in that department. The orchestra, um, very good as well technically. Uh, I thought that it could do with a little bit bigger soundstage. I think it was his, you know, biggest f fallback there. The um, uh, V11 from IVPIQ as well. Uh, I think timbre and tonality here on the V11 is 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 its standout technicality. Um, it's the, the feature that really kind of catches you. The rest, okay, it's fine, it's not bad, it's got a decent enough uh, imaging capability, decent enough sound stage, but nothing special. Um, technicality is on the, on the L8S, very good, very, very good. Um, great sound stage, great imaging, great detail retrieval, very correct timbre and tonality, at least for me and for my library. Uh, and then technically as well, these two are, you know, again, on a different league. They... <coughs> If I want to be really nitpick, you know, if I want to really nitpick and be uh, okay, I could say that maybe the timbre and tonality there on the on the Buddha Studio is maybe a little bit pushed, but overall, overall, uh, I, I, there's really not much I can complain. Um, just touching on the timbre and the tonality, which ones I think are the most correct ones uh, out of all of them. Uh, without a question, timbre and tonality on the orchestra light on the V11 on on the on the um, L8S are probably the ones that have 
um, for me at least, the best timbre and tonality. All the differences of these three, very big as compared to these two here, for example. No, they're not. I'm just saying that those have the best because when I consider their price as well, uh, you know, when you're saying $2,000, uh, fantastic. I mean, it's, it's a better timbre and tonality in terms of its performance only than those there. But does it have uh, the, the performance that it should have maybe in that department for a $2,000 IM? Mm, I'm not sure because when I see those three coming very close to it, um, you know, I have to question that. And and the same thing applies here with the Putastur. Very, very good. But those three, again, come very close here. They, they, they you know, they, they nudge the Butastur. So you have to question as well, uh, is is that uh, that technicality uh, on balance with its price point or not? Um, these, these, these four here, they, they find it, the timbre and tonality is fine. You know, you, you, I think it's the fact that you notice more the BA timbre that maybe will spoil things. Um, however, having said that, I, I still think that maybe the one that will edge out all of them is maybe yeah, the AS16 Pro. Uh, and then finally, in terms of the matching, like I said, um, this did actually quite well with the, with the ESSs. Okay, this as well did pretty decently with the ESS as did the V11. Okay, because of that warmer type of sound that they have here. Um, the DT600 depended, it depends if you're using it with the impedance adapter, then I, I would say uh, go for the warmer sounding uh, dongles. If you're gonna knock, you're not gonna use it with the, with the impedance adapter, then ESS, although. The difference, to be honest, is not very, very big. It's noticeable, but not big. Um, these two, again, I would say that I prefer to listen to them, you know, with the Yuki, with the, with the, with the Yafu, that kind of, of vibe. But um, the, the, the Q15 is, is, the, is the ideal match for them, honestly. I mean, I was very impressed with the Colorfly, I have to say. The Colorfly on either one of them was fantastic. The, the M1P, the one with the 4493. But the Q15 is next level. Um, and that's that, guys. I mean, I think, uh, like I said, this is not really so much a, a review, but I just wanted to give these IEMs a little bit of extra attention, a little bit of extra love. Um, I think the, the two here that really... Um, haven't gotten more attention and they they should or the v11 and the l8s the l8s and the v11 are really really nice ims uh, different in their sound warmer more more versatile uh, but i think it, uh, those two ims are definitely uh, you know really um, worthwhile looking into them at least listening to them if you don't go outright and buy them just listen to them first okay uh, and and then the Kumo as well. I, I wish it could have gotten a little bit more attention. Uh, you know, maybe if they would drop the price, maybe that would also attract certain. You know, a, a more a bigger crowd of people. Um, and then on the KZs, you know, the truth is this: love hate KZ. When they want, when they want, they know how to do things. And they they've done two nice IEMs here. That's that that's the reality. AS16 Pro. And uh, the AS24 are two, two very good IMs. I understand there's going to be now a new AS16. I'm curious to see what they've changed. Um, and that's that, guys. All right. I'll just show you now the graphs quickly and we'll wrap it up. Hi, guys. And now let's uh, look at some of these graphs of these IMs that we talked about. Okay. The first one I'm going to show you is the CVJ Kai Kumo. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me just change the color here. All right. So this is the Kai Kumo. They all have been. Um, I've I've done the um, the normalizing all at one um, k. Let me just adjust it just slightly. There we go. I've done normalizing all at one k, and the Kai Kumo. I've got here two graphs as you can see. The top one is with all the switches on. The the second one is with the first switch, which is for the base off. <laughs> And this gives me a difference here uh, between one level and the other of roughly 2 dBs, 3 dBs. It's enough for you to notice it, and especially for you to notice that the balance between the bass and the mids does sh shift slightly, okay? I personally like it more with the bass on all the time, although you see this monstrous amounts of bass here. It doesn't bleed as much as you think it would bleed because it's a BA. And it, it, sounds, it sounds nice. It sounds nice. I think that most people will probably like it more. Uh, on on the on the 
with with this setting with the lower base setting and now when you actually start considering and seeing and understanding okay it looks like a lot of bass okay but when you think that we're talking about 80 to 87 that's your base so you've got a 7 db base shelf or, or base operation operational area and we've got roughly a six six and a half db operation of of the mids you actually see that everything sits within a very nice tight window so it's it's not that crazy thing that you look at the graph and think oh my god this is an absolute mess and too blah blah no no it actually sounds decent it's problem like i said it's it you notice the ba timbre slightly more than on some of the other iems yeah namely uh, on iems like the as16 and the as24 <coughs> excuse me talking about as16 and as24 let's show us the as24 this is the as24 um, and again you can see the as24 uh, compared with the kumo uh, uh, the detail here is a little bit more uh, not as much as this a little bit more detail but where you notice more differences up top there's just a little bit more sparkly and you know a little bit more up there and coupled to the fact that they've tucked the base in in a different manner it just opens up the whole uh, mids upper mids and treble in a different manner so while the kumo sounds slightly warmer this one sounds more balanced out not as warm okay um the as16 pro funny enough i'm just going to take the kumo away if you look as16 pro is it's got very much the same thing as the as24 very much but you have that dip that i mentioned so after 2.8 you've got a massive dip here and this dip takes away uh, a lot of uh, of energy to the female vocals um and and to certain instruments and it makes the balance to the rest of the spectrum behind come off so it gives us a warmer sound uh, fair enough no sibilance no no you know you notice less the ba timbre than you do on the as24 that's true uh, but it loses a little bit of detail but overall still nice sounding i am uh next one i'm going to show you here now is um this is the uh, the ivp iq the v11 and i'm going to show you the v11 straight away with the orchestra light uh, and you can see that the orchestra light and the v11 are very similar in their mids upper mids and treble very very similar the difference here is in the bass and the v11 has got really really good bass um very very good bass i mean f for for the sake of you guys understanding how good the bass is i'm going to put you the uh this is the tansio mirai um and the bass of the v11 is every bit as 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 uh, as good as as the bass of the uh, tansio mirai um you would think that or because you can see a lot of similarities here between the the, you know, the mids, upper mids and treble of the Tansio and the V11 that they would also be very similar sounding uh, up top and no they aren't they aren't because obviously we've got the ESTs here and that EST balanced with the, the BAs that are doing the mids and the highs on the Tansio I mean, it just opens up the sound in a completely different manner so although you have got the same bass energy on one end on the other the balance between the two spectrums or the two ends of the spectrum is completely different so the v11 comes across as a warmer sounding im while the 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 tansi the halo comes across as a more coherent more uh, more uh, more um, uh, more coherent sounding im I, I'm, I'm trying to find a, a better word but it just sounds more overall balanced okay um going back here quickly to the uh the qe ears the balance of the QE ears is very good. Um, it, it's it's really well executed, um, and and shows by being you know more detailed up top. But both of them, like I mentioned as well, suffer from the technicalities. Could have been slightly better. You could have had a bit more, bit more sound stage, a bit more you know detail retrieval, a little bit more imaging. Which I mean, fair enough. Look, I'll give it to the credit. I'll give it to the QE ears. It's better than in the V11 because it doesn't have the amount of bass that the V11 has, but they still could be a little bit better. I was expecting a little bit more. Okay, now we've got those. We've done that. Uh, so that we've done. Okay, now the next one, the Leisurely Audio L8S, uh, and this again uh, is an IM that uh, is seriously it has to be heard to be truly appreciated. First of all. 
you, you know, pay attention to the following. Everything sits within a window of 79 to 85 and a half. So we're talking about six and a half dBs. That's, 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 um, th that's what you see usually in real top of the line, crazy, high end, neutral tuning, blah, 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 blah. And it, it sounds good. The L8S sounds really good. It sounds, like I said, like a Neon Pro. It sounds very similar to the Neon Pro. It's got a graph which is very similar to the Neon Pros. Hell, I'll, I'll show you the graph so that you guys don't think I'm lying. Our audio, our audio, our audio, our audio, Neon Pro, Neon Pro, the, oops, not, not that one, sorry. That's a model which they don't make anymore. Our audio, there we go. Okay. Our audio. Okay, normalized at 1K. That, they are very similar. The Our audio has got a little bit more, yes, in the upper mids and the treble, a little bit more energy there. But the truth is, it's not as noticeable as you would think here. More detail, definitely, more detail. It's got... But it's not as noticeable. The difference is not as big as what you would think. And you can see that the graphs follow each other very similarly. Very similar. It's just really up top there that you see a more significant difference. Otherwise, everything is very, very equal. Okay? So the L8S is truly one of, one of the nicest IEMs out of this group that I selected. It is truly. When you consider all the factors, price, performance, everything, it's, it's worthwhile paying attention to it. Next one. Uh, the well, the, the audio sense, the 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 DT six hundred, and DT six hundred. This is without the the impedance adapter, okay. And when you put the impedance adapter, basically what happens is you just boost this whole area here by a four or five dB uh, increment. So you notice more than the mids, the upper mids, and the treble. You that that whole area there above one k comes alive. So the balance. Uh, is shifted towards it being more detailed, more, 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 more technically, let's put it that way, capable. Uh, while on its stock format, it's 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 got maybe a little bit of a more of a warmer sound, which is more musical to a certain extent, and a focus on the bass. The bass, as you can see, it's it's flat by 200 hertz. I mean, this is tucked as done, perfect. I really can't complain there. Okay, and then the last two, the. Um, the um, Tansumi Rai, the, the Halo, and the, the Butastur, the Night Oblivion. The Butastur, let me, let me talk about the Butastur first. The Butastur, <coughs> if you actually compare it here briefly with the, um, with the, um, uh, with the, the L8S on Leisure Order, you can see they've got a kind of a similar si style of tuning, which is a style of tuning that you can see, for example, on things like the, the, um, uh, oh my, I just had a blank now. The, uh, uh, my, it will come to me in a second, one second. Um, anyway, but you can see that the, 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 the tuning is, is, is very similar. Um, and the, the, the same style of bass, the same way they've done the mids. But yes, okay, you do notice there's a, a more energy in the treble and in the up, especially in the upper mids and treble of the uh, of the butastur. It's it's got more. It's it's got that more um, that bigger presence. Uh, oh yes, just remember this. This is a style of tuning like the Anoli VX. Okay, this is a Anoli VX type of tuning. Um, the bass. Um, you, you, honestly, the bass is the same. You don't really notice this difference here of a little extra more mid bass on the L8S as opposed to the, the, the Butastur. Uh, it's more down to this energy that's there in the upper mids and trail. But again, very similar in their, in their tuning. Uh, and then like I was showing you before, here is the um, the Tassium, the Halo. And the Halo, uh, graphs, huh? this is for you guys to see how graphs work sometimes. Just for the sake of seeing something quite interesting. Look how it compares to this graph. And guess what that graph is for? That graph, that graph that I just put up there is from the AS24. Oh my God, the KZ. Uh, oh, now everybody's going to start saying that I said it's like a K, the KZ is the same as the Halo 20. No, it's not the Halo. Um, but you know what? Let me be honest with you guys. Let me really, really be honest with you guys. If I have to listen to the AS24, 
you know, uh, or at a lower volume. Uh, and I'm not doing any critical listening. And I've just got AS24 and I just swap over to the Halo quickly. You know, yes, I do notice I've got something straight away in my ears which is more resolving, cleaner, uh, more more detailed up top. That's easy to notice. But for the most part, if, if I'm outside, for example, if I'm wa taking a walk outside with either one of these IEMs, it will be difficult to notice the difference. It will truly be difficult to notice the difference. Because uh, at, up to a certain volume level, they are very equal. The halo comes alive is when you start giving it a little bit more volume, when you start pushing it a little bit more, then it comes alive and then that difference becomes more noticeable. Even when I'm walking outside like I sometimes do, I like walking in a, in a park which is nearby my home, just relaxing, just thinking about life. And then, yes, I can notice the difference between two of them. But under normal, just you know, taking a quick stroll or whatever, you, it's, it's not as it's not as prominent the difference as you would think, okay? Um, and 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 trust me, I, I gain absolutely nothing by saying this. Uh, you know, I gain absolutely nothing. Of course, of course, and the the the, the Hello is a more polished product. It's it's in every respect. Uh, it's it's got it, it's just more mature product, okay? Uh, and that's it, guys. I hope I hope um, I hope um, this was of interest. Um, I'll post all the, the songs that I used and I'll, and I'll try and put all the, the timestamps on here so that it will be easier to identify certain sections of the video. But uh, I hope it was uh, to your guys' enjoyment. All right. As always, like and subscribe. If there's any questions you want to ask, please feel free to do so. All right then. Take care now. Bye-bye.